Hello, thanks for joining us here at the West London Sport YouTube channel. I'm with Ben Kosky, Ian McCullough and former Rangers striker Kevin Gallen. Chat a bit about QPR. Um, draw at Reading on the weekend, guys. But obviously the big talking point is uh, Linda Dykes finally getting on the score sheet. First time since November, I believe, when he scored against Brentford from open play. So I did have to check my phone a few times to make sure I'd actually read it right for, for what they said, you know. But yeah, he's got on the score sheet. So, um, and uh, you know, he put in a decent performance, obviously, against uh, Millwall as well. So I feel like he kind of deserved the goal. And it was obviously, <laughs> you had to wait a while for it, but finally got it. I mean, Kevin, I mean, obviously... The, the obvious thing is he's what he's done right is he's scored the easy finish, which maybe he hasn't done often this season. But I mean, you look at the finish against uh, against Red, and I think if he'd have missed that, we'd have really been been panicking. Um, but, I mean, what have you seen from him the last couple of games? Have you liked and what, what do you think he's been been doing better to finally get on the score sheet? Well, first of all, it was an easy finish. I don't even. Uh, I think Ben might have scored it, but um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about you, Ian. You might not have got there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, as a centre forward, it, honestly, do you want to be a great goal scorer or score a great goal? It's one of them. I, it didn't bother me if I scored in a match and it was a tap in or I scored, um, you know, a long range goal. Then those things, maybe when you're retired, you can say, oh, look, look at that goal I scored. But Linda Dyke scoring from 30 yards on Saturday or Linda Dyke scoring from four yards, he will be just delighted that he scored. And, um, do you know what? He played well the last two games. In there's sometimes he's actually, I thought he did play really well against Preston North End. Not really well. I thought he played well and put himself about and but missed two sort of really good chances. So, you know, to finally get a, a goal for him, he must be absolutely delighted. And, you know, he probably thinks, I don't need this international break now. I want to go straight into it to the next game uh, and thinking, you know, wish there was a Tuesday game because it'd be full of confidence. Because that's all it takes. And I think I mentioned it before, just one goal, whether it comes off your knee or your backside. I know it's a cliche off your backside, but it's so true when you're centre forward and you've, you're on a drought like that and it just it finally goes in, the, the, the relief. And, you know, I'll give him one thing. He, he hasn't shied away with his work rate. He hasn't played well at times. And, I feel, and I've said that he needed a break and come out of the team. But his work rate, I have to say, he's always been there. He's always put himself about. Technically, sometimes he hasn't he hasn't done it well. He hasn't linked the play up. He ain't won a header, but he has chased everything down. So I'm really happy for him and well played. I think it's encouraging just to like say see him in the right position because a lot of I think when I watched him this season, he's just not been like when the ball bounces out and you think you just need to be in like Charlie Austin is all the time. Like he scores a lot of tap-ins because he knows where to be, and I feel like that's where Dykes has kind of fallen down is kind of lack of like awareness. And I suppose Kev, that's a lot of that is uh, being a striker is about that, isn't it? It's obviously about your hold-up play and your passing and things like that, but it's also about just being in the right place. Well, you got as a, when you're a coach, and and when I was coached as a young player, you know, the uh, Roger Cross was like my was the reserve coach when Jerry Francis was the manager, and even Bobby Ross when I was a, a schoolboy. They always used to say, always be in between the goal posts. Yeah. So if you've like outside of that. Uh, that sort of area, and I'm talking about the six-yard box outwards and the, and they call it the second six-yard box where the penalty spot, if that was another box, if you're in and around there, you know, you've got a chance of, like Linda Dykes on Saturday, of getting the chance uh, of scoring. So you need to be in, that, in, in those areas. If you're out on the, if someone's crossing it from the right wing and you're out on the left wing, you ain't going to score. You've got to be in between those posts to give you a chance. And Charlie Austin's excellent like that. He's always in between that um, those uh, areas. And if he is outside it, he'll always be making a run towards it. So, you know, he needs to get that more into his game, get in the box, be in that sort of, get in them situations. And, uh, and he'll score goals because you don't have to have brilliant technique to score, te uh, to score a tap in. You just need good brain and a good, and good movement. Yeah, because you think about the two goals he scored from open play this season, the one against Brentford, that was, he was close to goal in between the posts. I mean, like I said, the one against Reading on Saturday, that was the same. And the big chances he's missed that we all said he should have scored, like the one against Stoke, that was similar as well. He was in exactly the same position. So it's kind of like, you know where he needs to be to score goals, but I just, yeah, he hasn't really got in that position enough for me. Like, obviously, he should have had more goals than he has done this season. But... Repetition, repetition and making them runs. And that's why centre-forward is a really tough position to play because, 
not only you get the best plaudits when you score, but you can make 10, 15 runs in that box and the ball will never come. And if you get disheartened and stop making those runs, that time you, you, make, you don't make that run, the ball then comes in and you're like, oh, I should have been there, but I didn't think it was coming in. So you get so much disappointment as a centre forward when you make a run, keep making runs, runs, runs every time. It might take the 90th minute and you do another, your 15th run and you get a tap in and then you're the hero. Mm. And was, I think it was obviously a pretty good point, um, to be fair, against Fred and, you know, a playoff chasing team. I think a lot of fans probably would have taken that uh, before the game. Kev, I know you were pretty impressed with, like, the way the subs came on and the way they changed the game, especially with, with how QPR ended the game. Yeah, so watching the game, the, the second half, they really came at us for 20 minutes and they scored. And I thought, do you know what? We're going to do well to hang on here. And... Uh, the manager of Warburton, he's made a couple of changes. He made a change. He's brought on Willock for Austin. Uh, who else? He put, and he sort of, and he took off chair and he put on Don Ball. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Don Ball. yeah. And so he went like with two holding midfield players. And he put Johansson a little bit ahead of him and he got Willock doing what he does. A lot of, uh, a lot of running, a lot of mobility. And then the sort of the pendulum turned and we were on the ascendancy and I'm thinking, we're going to win here. And very surprisingly, Johansson's probably been our best best player since January. I thought he would definitely, you know, that was a, a chance which I really expected him to score. Mm. Shame thing, because he's, he's been guilty of a couple of, I mean, he's got a couple of goals, to be fair, and he does get in good positions, but he has been guilty of a couple of maybe missed opportunities. But, I mean, you can't blame him too much. Like you said, he's been done really well since January. Uh, I suppose a couple of concerns, though, Ian, obviously Jordi Deris going off injured, uh, Don Ball going off with an injury as well. Reading Warburton's quotes, hopefully the Dewey's one won't be too serious. It sounded like they were just kind of taking him off as a precaution. But, I mean, QPR fans will be praying this not too much of a serious injury because the impact he's had since he's come in has, has been a really good one, hasn't it? Yeah, he's done all right. He took that goal well against Millwall to win the game. Um, I mean, he is a big lad and you, you do have to wonder, you know, is, these injuries he's had, is, is he an injury-prone player? And you do have to factor that in if you're going you're gonna to sign him and the uh, you know, he tweaked his groin in the first couple of minutes of the game and sort of played through Warburton said, and then um, he lasted like two minutes into the second half and uh, and pulled up. But um, Don Ball got a crack on the the hip, yeah, and tried to run it off. But I mean, I have to give credit to Don Ball. He's a player who, at the start of this season, I thought if he played more than thirty games this season, then you're really in trouble. But I have to give him credit. He really has had a really good season, and I quite like. I think him being on the bench and coming on and playing a role like that is, is a good sign for QPR because, you know, he's effective in that role. And and you have to give credit to the coaching staff and the manager because he's become a very functional player. Whereas when they signed him, he, you know, he couldn't get in the Rotherham team. And I think we all thought he was just going to... It was just a, a signing by Warburton just because he knew him from back in the day at Watford. Um, but, you know, he did really well. So I think this 10-day break is, you know, everyone, you know, players, staff, media, everyone, fans, I think we just need a... A few days with no football, just kind of <laughs> regroup. It's been a, a manic spell, 12 games in 48 days, which is, you know, crazy. Yeah, it's been um, Saturday, Tuesday for, for weeks, hasn't it? Or Saturday, Wednesday, yeah. whatever, it is, literally for, for weeks on end. So, yeah, I mean, you say that, you'll be uh, you'll be praying for it to come back within about three days left of the yeah. international break. You'll be missing it so much. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting what you say about Don Ball as well. I mean, he had a really good spell in the team last season. I thought, um, you know, he's really getting the plaudits from a lot of QPR fans who were sort of saying he was going under the, under the radar a bit and was doing a really good job. But he, um, yeah, he's not really been in the team as much this season. Obviously, with like Field and Johansson coming in now, he's kind of quite far down the, the pecking order, I guess. But I think, yeah, he's definitely still got a role to play at the club. And he always, he never really seems to respond badly to like going out the team or getting dropped. He always comes on and gives it his all and really like puts his body in the way, which obviously, like, you know, he's got injured, which is obviously comes with that. Um, talking about Sam Field as well, Ben, uh, Mark Wolverton saying after the game that he's pretty keen to sign him on a, on a permanent basis and I think obviously they've got the option to to do that if they want. Um, maybe something that we don't hear Wolverton come out and say that much really. I mean, I remember asking him about uh, Naki Wells last year. I think it was after they, they beat Millwall when he scored a double and um, just asking him if he wanted to sign him permanently basically and he, he was sort of like non-committal and, you know, just gave me the ger generic kind of, oh, um just looking towards the next game or whatever. So um, but I think I suppose the difference with field is they've kind of got that option there to do that if they want. Um, but pretty encouraging to, to hear the manager come out and say that he wants to, to bring field in because he's done pretty well since he's come in. 
Yeah, I, I think the, perhaps the difference there, Dan, is that um, they made it fairly clear from the off that um, yeah. the loan was with a view to signing him permanently in the summer. So, so I don't think Mark Warburton will feel he's giving anything away there by saying he would, uh, you know, be be keen to to bring him on board. Um, I think a lot of the time a manager is is reluctant to talk up a loan player too much when when they know they haven't got any, any hope of bringing them in or or whatever. But um, Field, I think, has uh, yeah, has, has impressed really um, in, in what we've seen of him so far. Um, he's got that that physical presence. He's, he he gets uh, gets stuck in when he needs to. Um, and I think also, of course, let's not forget. I mean, he he scored the equaliser against Brentford a few minutes after coming on for his debut. So you're going to make yourself pretty popular if if that's how you start your your, your QPR career. Um, and I think. Field is, is, is going to be probably one they will bring in, you would think, but um, there's going to be other decisions they're going to have to make about uh, people they want to pursue and, and people they don't. Um, but uh, but he's really, I know we've said it before, he's a very good example of, of, of just really giving praise to, to the, the loan recruitment in January, which has been really successful um, and... Uh, you know, there's there's nobody who's come in that you've you've sort of thought, what was the point of that? Because they've all played a a big role, and um, yeah, I think Field is 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 one that's that's definitely um, that, that definitely you would expect is going to be a long term signing for QPR, and of course he's got a fantastic name for headlines as well. Um, you know, we, we can get an awful lot of uh, mileage out, out out of his name, so that's a plus in my book as well. Always thinking of the journalist's perspective, aren't you, Ben? <laughs> I try to, yeah. yeah. I think it's a bit of a no-brainer as well, really, to get him in if if they can get him in on, a, on an affordable deal. Like I say, I think he's done uh, done really well so far. Um, but yeah, we'll move on to the kind of big thing I wanted to discuss today, which is sort of a good time to reflect, I guess, with the international break now. I mean, QPR pretty much established safety. You know, they're, I don't, they're very, very unlikely now that they're, they're going to go down. I don't think they're going to go up either. I think even though they've been on a great run this year, I don't think the playoffs are probably maybe a little bit too out of reach given how the, the first half of the, the season went. Um, so, obviously, Mark Wilburton's on this kind of two-year rolling deal. Um, so, the, obviously, the club can... You say it's in their hands, essentially. They can sort of decide to, to keep him on or they can decide to, to go in, a, in another direction. Um, but what we're kind of going to focus on, Kev, I'll start with you. I mean, do you think Warburton's... Does he deserve to get that third season in charge of the club do you think he's done enough this year to turn it around after the the way they started the season to carry on the kind of project that he's had had going at QPR well it all depends on the on the, his end to the season now now if if we have more points than last season and a better league position it's very hard not to have him for the third season to be honest because if you look back you know he, he last if he if he does better this season than last season Without Eze, Mackie Wells, Hugo, I think you have got to say well done to him for, um, for for improving. So I mean, the vast improvement from January is is for for everyone there to see. I mean, if you would have asked me this question in December or or the ads in December, we would be like like oh I don't know about that one. But at the moment, if the season ended right now, I would say yes. But you know, anything can happen uh, in the next uh, six weeks. So at the moment, yes, I think he deserves another year. I think he's done well. Um, I think the, the the team are playing well. They look organised. They look like a good base. They look um, like they know what they're doing. And he'll be saying to the, the, the people above, come on, let's go and get some players. Let's push on. Let's try and get in the playoffs next year. Mm. And I would be, if it was me, manager, I would be in the same, I would be knocking on the door saying, come on, back me now. All I need is a few more players and I can get you in the in the top six. So yeah. at the moment, I'd say yes. It's funny you say about, I mean, me and Ian did a video not not too long ago saying, is, is his time running out? So that's how it shows how quickly things change. I don't think any of us expected just how well they'd do after the, January during the January transfer window, um, the you know the turnaround's been pretty re remarkable. Really, I thought they would improve, and I thought they'd maybe stay up. But the you know to get them up into what looks like they could you know well get a top half finish, I think, is a, a massive um, success for him. I mean, not nine wins in in twenty twenty one, I think it is, um, which just show, tells you 
how well they've done. Um, and Kev, yeah, you mentioned about obviously losing Eze and Hugo and Wells, but do you think with the guys he's got in, like with Johansson and Austin, et cetera, the people that he's brought in, do you think the team is kind of better going forward now than it than it was last year? Or do you think that with having Eze, do you think that was um, that made the team better? Uh, look, last season we conceded a lot more goals, but we scored scored a lot more goals because we were far more attacking. That Ose Samuel Eze uh, chair was in and out. Uh, Hugo Wales, so, and a lot of attacking and uh, talent, and a lot of attacking and ability, and that left it a little bit open at the back. So this season, defence has been a lot stronger, uh, especially now we've gone to the three at the back. He's brought in Johansson, Field, Austin, obviously. And we just look like, physically, we look a lot more experienced. We look like, you know, when the game is going against us against Reading, he now can go up to the bench, change it and make it better, which he did. So I think if he, if he, if he improves from last season, then I think, you know, it'd be very harsh not to give him another year. Yeah, what do you think, Ian? Would you like to see him get given another year? Do you think he deserves it? I mean... A big part of like what Kev said there is like he's, he's adapted, hasn't he? You know, the, he was played the four at the back system for the first half of the season. It wasn't working, and we, I mean, he got a lot of criticism, including from us, for you know, who said he should change it and maybe that he should have done so sooner. But with the January signings, it kept, kind of gave him a bit more flexibility to do that. But I mean, I think he deserves a lot of credit for the way he adapted. Do you think he's he's kind of done enough? Obviously, we'll see how the, the end of the season goes. But currently, do you think he, he should stay for next season as well and carry on trying to build something at QPR? Yeah, absolutely. I think I don't think you should be underestimated the difficulties of managing in this current climate. I mean, they had a very very short pre season. One season finished, another one started very quickly. They lost, you know, the, probably the best player the team's had for a very long time. You had the SA Samuel thing hanging over, the Ryan Manning thing hanging over, Jordan Hugel leaving. You know, at the start of the season, they didn't have enough players in midfield. We all said that at the time. You know, and you lose two through injury, you really are up against it. And, you know, the accusation against Warburton was, oh, he doesn't have a plan B. Oh, we can't sort out defence. Well, he's he's proven that's complete fallacy, really, because he's done both. Um, but I think another thing that he's done since he's been in the club, the away form is immeasurably better than any time I can remember, you know, watching QPR. I mean, 12 wins he's got away from home. Is, yeah, QPR which is more than Holloway had in his whole time in the second spell, I think. Mm. Yeah, I think it's like I think Jack Supple done a uh, tweet, yeah. a stout on Twitter saying it was more than like I think three or four managers combined. Um, you know, it's pretty impressive. And I, I shouldn't be underestimated. You know, turning Rangers into a side that can pick up points away from home. I think they've only lost six times away from home this season, which is, you know, I don't ever remember. Well, perhaps the promotion winning teams had similar records, but that, that's pretty impressive to do that. And also to kind of give the team an attacking kind of verve and a bit of style to it that we had last year and the way we know the team want to play. I think he deserves a lot of credit for what he's done. And uh, yeah, as Keir says, you give the guy a little bit of money to kind of bring a few players in. I don't think he wants much. He's always said he likes to have a lean squad. So I don't think we're going to have like kind of the old days of a 40-man squad to choose from. But if he can get, you know, two, three, maybe four players in over the line in the summer just to improve on what they've got, then yeah, there's, there's no reason why they can't push on next year under, under him. Mm. Do you agree with that, Ben? I mean, and how important do you think the uh, the kind of end of the season is? Obviously, nine games left with the uh, in the season left to go now. I mean, how important is that going to be for him? Whether he, he gets to, to carry on? I mean, he's like obviously saying this year's been going great. So if he if he carries on that and the, the trajectory is going upwards, I mean, do you think he he should stay on? Well, I mean, as Kevin and Ian have both said, yeah, I, I have to agree. He should certainly be staying on um i mean you you alluded to it dan talk, talking in december let's not forget what the, the the landscape seemed to be then i think most people agree mark warburton is toast as qpr manager that 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 was the general feeling ended. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me spotted um yeah it's totally unintended no uh, but but seriously i mean um you know, I don't think most people saw a way back for him as QPR manager. It was a case of when he goes, not if. Just, just remember that. And, and the turnaround has been fantastic. As Ian said, he's shown he does have a plan B. I like the fact that a lot of managers can be really stubborn about their formation and things like that. Uh, and he's not. He, he's looked at what he's got and he said, right, we'll give this a try. And I think everyone would agree it, it's worked extremely well. It's brought 
more out of a lot of the players who, who were there. Um, and let's also look at, you know, how QPR managers in the past, how many managers have, have come back from, from the brink like that? There's not too many. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm again, I'm thinking back to, to Ian Holloway first time around. I think everyone, you know, we got to a point where uh, we'd had the, the Vauxhall Motors game in the FA Cup and uh, things weren't going all that well in the league. And I think at that time... I didn't play in that, Ben. <laughs> no, no, ab absolutely. We just... And I'm sorry for even raising it, but um, <laughs> but 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 you know, but that but that's the only time I can think of where the general consensus was a QPR manager has had it, and he's turned it around and shown that was wrong. So there's very few that that, that actually do it, and um, and really, I think the question at the moment, perhaps, for, for, is not so much should QPR hang on to Mark Warburton as as, as can they hang on to Mark Warburton. Um, because quite possibly, as you said, Dan, the end of the season, if they finish well, they finish in the top half, more points than last season, you just wonder if uh, some of the other clubs with a bit more money at championship level uh, are going to start sniffing around and, and saying, actually, you know what, this, this is the guy who could do a job for us. And I would say, let, let, let's hope not. So definitely, if they can... Um, Rangers should definitely be, be trying to hang on to Mark Warburton for a, for a third year. And, you know, again, looking at, look at the history, that's no mean achievement. There's not too many QPR managers that um, complete or, or, or start a third season. You know, mm. not very many. Yeah, it's interesting so, yeah. where you kind of flip that. I don't think many, I don't think, I, I hadn't really considered that. I don't think many fans maybe considered that other clubs, you know, might be interested. Like you say, he's done a good job the second half of the season. There's always teams looking for... For new managers as well and yeah I mean I, I, I had to admit I mean me and Ian spoke about it on a video when when things were looking really bleak and I I thought he was I thought he was gone I mean we knew it we know his position was under review that the club were looking at him and I, I really thought that they were gonna make a change but yeah absolutely fair fair play to him he's completely turned it around and he's actually given a bit of optimism for the future now with the young guys playing really well and it's, it's looking a lot more positive and I suppose another thing Kevin important to touch on is obviously he's had He'll be having two years at the club. Um, you know, managers come and go so often nowadays. You know, a lot a season some managers get if that. I mean, look at what Watford are doing there, chopping and changing every every few months. I mean, when when you're a player, like, does it help to have that consistency in the manager? Do you like, do you like someone to be there, knowing what you're going to get from them for for a few years? Is that, is that like a big bonus? Well, it, it depends because if you're if you've got a manager and you're playing week in week out. You want him to stay. Yeah. But the lads who are on the bench, they're quite happy to see a new manager because now they think I've got a chance of playing. So it all depends on the, on the player. Uh, for me, if you're playing, you want to keep it the same. Uh, if you're not playing, you want to say, hold on a minute, I wouldn't mind a new manager and get a fresh chance. So, but I think he's, he's, he's I wouldn't say there'd be much, um, what's the word? you know, behind the scenes, the players who are not playing, I don't think there'll be much, you know, bad apples in that group where, oh, I'm not playing the managers. Because this is what happens in the, in, a, in the dressing room. I'm not playing, the manager's rubbish, and the lads who are not playing, they're all sticking the knife in. And the lads who are playing are like giving it, get on with it. Do you know what I mean? And that's what happens. So I think they've got quite a good sort of squad there. Everyone wants to play. And... Um, you're not playing you can some some people can cause a bit of aggro behind the scenes but do you think that's why he says he likes to have a small squad a lean squad to kind yeah, of yeah. And, and maybe and maybe a young squad a younger squad because younger players don't really you know it's the older players who've been there and sort of done it a little bit they're the ones you know who all you know a bit of backstabbing and you know and all that stuff but yeah yes in a leaner squad you can't, you have injuries and then, you know, the hardest thing for a manager, I would suggest, is not the 11 he's picking every week, it's the other ones who are on the bench or in the stand. They're the ones he's got to keep happy. Yeah, definitely. Do you think the um, consistency though, Kev, might help the, the club? Because obviously they've had a, quite a lot of turnover of managers in recent years. Do you think having someone in that can keep building that Warburton's done? And obviously he seems to be quite good working with like a younger squad, with like a, a smaller squad, like, like Ian's just said. Do you think that that could help the club in the long run? Well, I just think the, the I think the turnover. If you have a, a new manager, 
costs a lot of money. One, you've got to sack him and pay him up. Then you've got to get a new manager in. Then the new manager comes in, I don't like these players. I want my players, new players. And it starts turning into like a load of money you've got to spend. And, you know, I know we've got money, but at the end of the day, you don't want to be spending money, every, loads of money every year and getting the same position on the, in the league, like lower mid-table in the last few years. So if you're going to spend money, you want to be up there, don't you? So I assume consistency in the manager uh, in the manager manager position would is a healthy thing for the club. Yeah, mm. and I think just to follow that on, I think that's what damaged them before because you had a massive squad. You had Chris Ramsey's players, Jimmy Ford Astorbank's players, Harry Redknapp's players, Ian Holloway's players, and I think Holloway couldn't deal with that. That was his biggest problem. The squad was so big, he couldn't. He kept chopping and changing and trying to keep everyone happy and you never get a settled side. So I think, you know, when you change managers so regularly, it's not just about, you know, the short term, it's about the long term as well, you know. Yeah. So, so this, Ian, so like at Watford, you, we just mentioned they chop and change their manager, but their manager don't pick the players. They mm. have someone above them. We, start, we need a centre forward, we need a left back, we need this. They buy the players say to the manager, you coach that team to get promoted or whatever. It's a different model. It is a different model, uh, Kevin. And I should point out, of course, we have uh, experienced a similar model at QPR not all that long ago when, uh, let's just say, it didn't work uh, all that well. Uh, I, I think, um, you know, we, we, we had situations, did we not, where actually who was the manager was irrelevant um, because they were only, you know, required to, to basically take training. Yeah, they weren't required to pick the players or, or anything like that. Um, so you can go too far the other way, but um, uh, but I think, uh, as, as you say, Watford's model is, is is a little bit different. I mean, I think if we're looking in the Championship, perhaps for an example of where the constant changing of manager doesn't get you anywhere, I would say Nottingham Forest uh, is, is a perfect example. And Warburton, um, obviously, yeah. part of that, wasn't he? As well, he was yeah, there. indeed. I think he was there less than a year, and, yeah, and was long. most of their managers are there for less than a year. And would the player that, turnover is huge. It would be interesting to know what the model is: is who has the final say on the players group being brought in? I know at certain clubs it goes to the director of football. He presents he presents the player to the manager and to the chairman, and then they say, and they're all in agreement: yes, we'll sign this. It'd be interesting where if you have just like the managers in charge and the, the scout says, look, do you want this player? And he'll say yes or no. So it's, it's quite an interesting one at QPR. Who actually has the final say? I want this player. Or, all right, you can have that one, and but I want, I'm going to sign this one. Because that can happen as well in a football club. I think publicly that's what they say does happen. But, you know, I'd say something like a Lee Wallace or, you know, it was definitely a... A Warburton signing, wasn't it? So, yeah, it, it is interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Ian Kelly would have been a, a Warburton signing. Yeah, I think so. No, well, um, yeah, sorry. No, I mean, no, no, uh, no predictions this week, obviously, because it's the uh, <laughs> the international break, so no, no games to guess. But I thought Ben came up with the idea it might be kind of interesting to sort of make our predictions for where QPR might actually finish this this season and whether they can get in the the top half or not. So, Ben, we'll start with you. I mean. How many, obviously nine games left, how many more points do you think they can get and where do you think they'll finish come the end of the year? Um, I'm going to say uh, they'll finish 11th in the table, which, by the way, I think would be a very good achievement. I think anything in the top half, uh, we've got to see as a positive. Um, I, I actually think they've got quite a tricky run in. Um, I mean, it might that might sound odd. When you look at the games that are coming up after the international break, they've got uh, uh, Coventry, Rotherham, Sheffield Wednesday... Uh, sorry, Nottingham Forest as well. All, all teams that are either in the relegation zone or, or trying to stay out of it. But of course, in some ways, those are the teams you don't want to be playing at this stage uh, of the season. Um, so I think that's quite tough. Then you've obviously also got Norwich to play as well, who are walking away with the title. Um, so I, I would expect a mixed bag. Uh, I think that they'll certainly win some more games. They'll lose some games. Um, and I would say points total something in the in the low 60s about 63 something like that i think is uh, is what we should be looking at in 11th place yeah what do you think ian it's, it's sort of same as, as ben or do you think they could do a little bit better or a little bit worse or yeah i think it'd be, be around there i mean they've got to try if they can get 60 points is the most points they've got since they got relegated from the premier league 
and they finished 12th. They could finish above 12th with more points than 60, then I think that'd be a stellar achievement. And um, yeah, I think around about that spot between sort of 11th, 10th and 12th. Yeah. What about you? Kevin? So eleventh, basically. <laughs> <laughs> You're agreeing with me, Ian. I oh, am. <laughs> I was going to say playoffs now, just to be different. It's going to say they're going to sneak sixth on the last day. <laughs> second, down second. Um, I don't think we'll catch Norwich. Uh, you know what? I have to agree with the lads there. I think we'll get another 13, 14 points and finish. I think we're going to finish. Um, they said that I'm going to go twelfth. Yeah, I'd, I, when I looked at it as well, 13 was kind of the total I had down. I think, like, like I said, I got to play Norwich and Swansea, which will, which will be difficult. But I think that we'll get a few points against the teams that are sort of down there that they've, they've got it's to play. The so. fight, it's the ones fighting for their lives. Like they said, Norwich yeah. is rock. They're the tricky True, game. Yeah. They played against them. They're fighting for their lives. Um, they are probably want to be playing QPR as well because they'll want a mid-table team, won't they? They don't have much to, to play for. That's probably who you want to be playing if you're like a team that's struggling for survival. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, well, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah, about, about, I think they can get in the top half, definitely. I think I'll, I'll probably say 11th. Um, I think that would be a pretty good season for QPR, given where they were at first half of the season before the new year. I think that would be a big success. Um, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe, and we'll be back again soon.